Now, Kabir, as we might expect, and one whose reactions to the spiritual order were so wide and various, uses, by turn, all the symbols of sense. He tells us that he has seen without sight. The effulgence of Brahma tasted the divine nectar, felt the ecstatic contact of reality, smelt the fragrance of the heavenly flowers, but he was essentially a poet and a musician. Rhythm and harmony were to him the garments of beauty and truth. Hence, in his lyrics, he shows himself to be, like Richard Rolla, above all things, a musical mystic. Creation, he says, again and again, is full of music. It is music. At the heart of the universe, white music is blossoming. Love weaves the melody, while its renunciation beats the time. It can be heard in the home as well as in the heavens. It's concerned by the ears of common men, as well as by the trained senses of the ascetic. Moreover, the body of every man is a liar on whom, on which Brahma, the source of all music, plays. Everywhere Kabir discerns the unstruck music of the infinite, that celestial melody which the angel played to St. Francis, that ghostly sympathy, uh, that ghostly symphony which fills which filled the soul of Rolla with ecstatic joy and let's uh poem 17 18 29 41 54 76 83 89 97 are referred to. Um, well, I mean, I'll see also. The one figure which he adopts from the Hindu pantheon and constantly uses is that of Krishna, the divine flute player. See number 50, 53, and 68. He sees this supernal music too in its visual embodiment as rhythmical movement, that mysterious dance of the universe before the face of Brahma, which is at once an act of worship and an impression and an expression of the infinite rapture of the imminent God. And see poem twenty six, thirty two, and seventy six. The flute player could be thought of as a metaphor for the uh, For the use of language. Yet, in this wide and righteous vision of the universe, Kabir never loses touch with that diurnal existence, never forgets the common life. It can also be thought of the mover of humans. Never forgets the common life. Or right, there's a lot of nine-gate animals, aren't there? His feet are firmly planted on the earth. His lofty and passionate apprehensions are perpetually controlled by the activity of a sane and vigorous intellect, by the alert common sense, so often found in persons of real mystical genius, the constant insistence on simplicity and directness, the hatred of all abstractions and philosophizings. See 75, 78, 80, 90. The ruthless criticism of external religion, these are amongst his most marked characteristics. God is the root whence all manifestations, material and spiritual alike, proceed. And God is the only need of man. Happiness shall be yours when you come to the root. See poem 80. Hence, to those who keep their eye on the one thing needful, denominations, creeds, ceremonies, and conclusions of philosophy, the disciples of asceticism are matters of comparative indifference. They represent merely the different angles from which the soul may approach that simple union with Brahma, which is its goal, and are useful only insofar as they contribute to this consummation. 
so that so thoroughgoing is Kabir's eclecticism that he seems by turns Vedantist and Vaishnavite, pantheist and transcendentalist, Brahman and Sufi, in the effort to tell the truth about that ineffable apprehension so vast and yet so near, which controls his life, he seizes and twines together as he might have woven together, contrasting threads upon his loom, symbols and ideas drawn from the most violent and conflicting philosophies and faiths. All are needed if he is ever to suggest the character of that one whom the Upanishad called the sun-colored being who is beyond this darkness. As all the colors of the spectrum are needed if we would demonstrate the simple richness a white light. In thus adapting traditional materials to his own use, he follows a method common amongst the mystics, who seldom exhibit any special love for original form. They will pour their wine into almost any vessel that comes to hand, generally using by preference and lifting to new levels of beauty and significance the religious or philosophic formula current in their own day. Thus we find that some of Kabir's finest poems have been their subjects have as their subjects the commonplaces of Hindu philosophy and religion. The Leela are Sport of God, The Ocean of Bliss, The Bird of the Soul, Maya, The Hundred Petaled Lotus, and The Formless Form. Many again are soaked in Sufi imagery and feeling. Others use as their material the ordinary surroundings and incidents of Indian life, the temple bells, the ceremony of the lance, marriage, Sukti, pilgrimage, the characters of the seasons, all felt by him in their mystical aspect, as sacraments of the soul's relation with Brahma, and many of these a particularly beautiful and intimate feeling for nature is shown. See poem 15, 23, 67, 87, and 98. In the collection of songs here translated, there will be found examples which illustrate nearly every aspect of Kabir's thought and all the fluctuations of the mystic's emotions, the ecstasy, the despair, the still beatitude, the eager self-devotion, and the flashes of wide illumination, the moments of intimate love, his wide and deep vision of the universe, the eternal spirit of creation. See 82. The words being told like beads, within the being of God. 14, 16, 17, 76, is here seen balanced by his lovely and delicate sense of intimate communion with the divine friend, lover, teacher of the soul. 10, 11, 23, 35, 51, 85, 86, 88, 92, 93, above all, the beautiful poem, 84. And we're not going to hear them in the original here, so. All these apparently paradoxical views of reality are resolved in Brahma, so all other opposites are reconciled in him, bondage and liberty, Love and renunciation, pleasure and pain. 17, 25, 40, 89. Union with him is the one thing that matters to the soul, its destiny and its need. 51, 52, 54, 70, 74, 93, 96. And this union this discovery of God is the simplest and most natural of all things, if we would but grasp it. 41, 46, 56, 72, 76, 78, 97. The union, however, is brought about by love, not by knowledge, our ceremonial observances. 88, 54, 55, 59, 91. 
and the apprehension which that union confers is ineffable, neither this nor that, as Riesbrook has it, 9, 46, 76, real worship and communion is in spirit and in truth, 40, 41, 56, 63, 65, 70. Therefore, idolatry is an insult to the Divine Mother. 42, 49. And the devices of professional sanctity are useless apart from charity and purity of soul. 54, 65, 66. Since all things, and especially the heart of man, are God-inhabited, God-possessed. 26, 60, uh, I mean, 56, 76, 89, and 97. He may best be found in the here and now, in the normal human bodily existence, the mud of material life. 3, 4, 6, 21, 29, 40, 43, 48, 72. We can reach the goal without crossing the road. 76. Not the cloister, but the home is the proper theater of man's efforts. And if he cannot find God there, he need not hope for success by going further afield. In the home is reality. There is love and detachment, bondage and freedom, joy and pain play by turns upon the soul. And it is from their conflict that the unstruck music of the infinite proceeds. Kabir says none but the Brahma can be can evoke its melodies. Part three. This version of Kabir's songs is chiefly the work of Mr. Rabindranath Tagore, the trend of whose mystical genius makes him, as all who read these poems will see, a peculiarly sympathetic interpreter of Kabir's vision and thought it has been based upon the printed Hindu text with the Bengali translation of Mr. Rajithi Mohan Sen, who has gathered from many sources, sometimes from books and manuscripts, and sometimes the lips of wandering ascetics and minstrels, a large collection of poems and hymns, which Kabir's name is attached, and carefully sifted the authentic songs from many spurious works attributed to him. These painstaking labors alone have made the present undertaking possible. We have also added before us a manuscript English translation of 116 songs made by Mr. Ajit Kumar Chakra Bharti from Mr. Ajitthi Mohan Sen's text and a prose essay upon Kabir from the same hand. From these, we have derived great assistance. A considerable number of readings from the translation have been adopted by us, while several of the facts mentioned in the essays have been incorporated into this introduction. Our most grateful thanks are due to Mr. Ajit Kumar Chakrabarti for the extremely generous and unselfish manner in which he has placed his work at our, dis our disposal. And E, U, and the reference to the headlines of the poems is Sun Tanikananda Kabir by Sri Kashite Mohansen in four parts Brahma Charya Srama Bhopur 1910-1911 uh, and Professor J. F. Blumhardt has helped normalize some of the translation.